This is part two of my videos on installing an eight foot tall metal deer fence. You can see I've got the roll of fence that we're gonna be using just off screen here. It's an eight foot tall metal uh, deer fence wire. And this is a contraption that I built a couple of years ago to be able to install large rolls of wire basically with one person. So I've got this mounted on the front of my John Deere. It's a 2032R and I've got it set up with the weight on the back so we can help counterweight this 450 pound roll of wire that we're gonna be having have stand stood up on the front of this here in a minute. So what I've started with is uh, the fork mounts on my tractor. This is a setup from a company called Artillion. They make an adapter that then allows you to put a John Deere three point quick hitch on the front of the tractor. So I've used that as a starting point for building this bracket that I've you know, used to make this contraption to, to pick up the fence. This bracket's really nice because you can pick up a second three-point attachment if you need to take two things to one place. You can, like I can pick up a, a three-point attachment on the back and then pick up another one on the front, drive onto my 22-foot flatbed and take both pieces with me. Or I can pick up an attachment and set it on the back of my flatbed truck and then strap it down and take another piece somewhere. So good good easy setup and then if you're if you're trying to fabricate something all you have to do is just have round tubing at three different points and then you've got a quick connect system where you can come in and, and mount and unmount pretty easily so the way this works is you've got this center bar that when we dump the loader down is going to fit through the center roll of our wire that we've got setting here on the ground so basically the wire comes in on a pallet it's set on you know you've got it set at ground level well, it's 450 pounds. I don't know how anybody else would install it without something like this. I mean, I suppose if you had four or five people, you could pull it off. But this is gonna go through the center. This actually isn't strong enough. You can see it's bent a little bit from, from picking it up. But I've got a chain loop here at the top that I've welded on, and then I'll chain back to the back. And I still don't have enough curl power with the loader on this tractor. So this point sticks into the ground and then I'll use that as a leverage point to just back the tractor up while I keep pushing down on the loader and rolling it back in order to stand it up just using that leverage. So once we've got the wire stood up and on here secure, it's pretty well balanced and it's you know not too much of an issue. Because you've got that much weight stood up in the air, you do need to be careful about driving across inclines and stuff like that, which may be an issue as far as getting down to where I've got this fence, but I've, got a, I've cut a fairly level road next to where this wire is going just to make sure that I, I don't have too many issues there. It's just going to be getting this roll down there to start that. So once we've got the roll stood up, basically it'll come off and then it feeds along this round bar, this round tube that I've got here on the side, and we would attach to a post behind this point and then we'll just drive along and I've made it so this can switch to either side depending on which side of, of your fence you're driving on. In this situation, we're gonna be on this side. And if you're off angle, like say your, your posts are straight, but your ground is down at a little angle, you can adjust this out or in. Oop, that bottom isn't supposed to come out. Everything, it's been sitting in the wood, so everything got a little rusted, so I lubricated it up. But normally when you've got pressure on this, it just tries to push in, so I just put a clamp here to I should drill a hole, but then the adjustment, you'd have to drill a bunch of holes and some more, one more place for it to rust. So the wire will run across here and basically that keeps the wire completely stood up as you drive down the fence line. And so you get to, you know, you get past one or two poles and you're ready to tie off. I've got a, I've got a little a quick system that I use to attach the wire to metal posts that I'll show here in a little bit. But once we get past the post that we're gonna tension, we take these pins and I've got holes drilled in here. So then the wire gets caught on this. So we're able to tension all the way up and down this with using these pins. And then we just drive the tractor forward to pull our wire tight. And then if we're tight at the bottom or tight at the, or loose at the top, we can just dump 
or you know curl or dump the loader out in order to put more tension at the top or bottom of this which works really really well so we've got adjustment this way and we've got adjustment this way so if you're working on hills everything it's just it's a really really slick system i modeled this after you know there's a a, a few commercial implements you can buy for for bobcats where they'll take you know for putting up big rolls of uh, of chain link fence or fence like this but this is a fairly easy thing to build at home the main the main thing to have is something that would be easy to mount to on your loader which can be kind of a trick if you have a tractor like this the um and you're looking to build just one off thing like this and you don't want to go to the expense of buying another eye match and a bracket like this they do sell uh the the quick um the loader attachment brackets so if you take basically the the base loader system where you could just buy those raw and and weld them on to something like this but i i think this is a better setup because it's it's more useful for other things i guess if you didn't have very many uh, three-point attachments all of my stuff uh, with the exception of my fertilizer spreader can can work with an eye match so i can pick stuff up and move it around you know fairly easily with that so we've got uh gone over this system i'm going to show picking this wire up and then we'll go down to where i've got all my posts in we'll show that and then i'll go over these quick uh quick twist ties that that go on with a power drill that we use to secure our fence So as you can see, that works pretty slick to get a roll of wire that's this big and that heavy off the ground. The trick now is gonna to be to get down to where we need to go. Let me grab that camera and I'll show you what I've got in for my posts and, and uh, what the trick is gonna be down there. So I've got my, see my first post right there. We've got a, it has a cross brace in order to hold it tight there at the end. Everything's concreted in and then we've got this road going down, which I showed in the first video, but I didn't have the, didn't have all the posts in, so you can visualize a little bit better about where the fence is going to go. So we're going all the way down and around, down there to the corner, 
and then later I'll go up this hill and, and back the other direction. But the main trick here is going to be, this road's pretty level, but making the transition from coming, I'm gonna pull forwards down this driveway and then try to back up without, it does have a little bit of a off camber to it here, which could be a little bit of a trick, but if I post this video, that means I didn't tip over and die. Getting back here went pretty well, as you saw. I didn't even come close to tipping over, so that's always a positive. We're down here at the far end, and this is my, my anchor post here at the end. You can see it's got the cross brace, and then we'll have another one coming towards me when we're getting ready to come up this hill. But for right now, I don't have that one on there because I need to do a little bit more grade work on this hill to get it ready. But we've got the wire hooked up. I'm gonna show you beyond dealing with the, the mass of the wire that you're, that you're trying to put up, attaching it is the next pain. So I've got these quick connectors that basically just twist on and fit these poles. So those are the larger ones. And then they come, they come as a, as a setup like this. And then you just put them around the pole you gotta squeeze them together a little bit and then you've got an adapter that goes on your drill and if you look down there focus you see it's kind of slotted so basically what will happen let me put this on the tripod So we've got our cable hooked around. We take this and then it's, or we've got our clamp hooked around. Put it in your drill. And then as it spins, it tightens it down and then it clips the end. So that's a really quick way to put on a bunch of these clamps and, and put this fence up in a pretty quick manner. I bought these at a a store that sells commercial you know quantities of chain link fence so you can see I've got I've got the pins in here at the front and we're tensioned so I've got my wire coming off there and then it runs on the side and then we're tensioning off those pins right now. So I've got it pulled to the point where I can go ahead and put the wire ties on this first pole. good because I didn't have the wire in there anyway. I'm dealing with a... I hurt my wrist on my right hand working out the other day, so... Kind of fighting against that. Probably shouldn't be doing this, but whatever. So as you can see, that goes pretty quick. We 
got a little better wrist strength than I had today. And I'll come back once I have the tractor out of the way and get that top one with a ladder. And I put these to the side. I mean, you can kind of turn them after you get them on, but so that when you, if for some reason you're walking on this side of the fence or on the other side, you don't, don't catch yourself because these are kind of sharp from the raw end it cuts. Okay, so we've got that tied off here. I'm going to reposition the cameras and show you how it rolls out now. I do try to just for whatever, put them on the same, put them on the same row going across just for when you look down it, you'll see kind of the same. Just back out of it, take the tension off the pins. Pull all the pins out. If you were doing this every day, some kind of hydraulic or whatever mechanism that 
would more quickly retract and expose those pins would probably be worth it, but for what I'm doing, it's not a big deal. change so I need to make an adjustment here with my high precision stop there Let's see if I can get my pins in now So as you can see, that goes pretty quick. I'm gonna go ahead and string out a long row here and we'll see if we can get this knocked out done. Everything's going well, as you can see. I got uh, got all the easy part done. We're all the way down, all the way down to the corner. You can see my make the classic mistake of driving away without picking up your ballast box. But we're looking pretty good here. But now we've got to the point where we got to change tactics because, as we see, I rode now deviates from my path so I can't drive along the side of it like I did for all this where I just came in and and laid it flat along the edge that's a great sounding truck I almost made it up the hill so it's gonna be a little bit messy but what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna unspool as much as I need to get to the end and then I've got another bracket that I can use that's, that I can chain to the loader and get down on the far end and I'll just have to tension this entire run all by itself and then do it in one pull instead of tensioning and 
each pole and, and, uh, and tying it off. So I'm going to run out of enough wire to get down to the end and then I'm going to cut it off and then we'll feed it back through and, and tension it from the end, which is going to be a bit of a trick by myself, but we'll see how it goes. Unrolling that wire actually worked out pretty well. I rolled it out kind of as I went and, and zip tied it to the post so it wouldn't fall over. I had to, uh, I had one section here where I had to go behind a tree, so I only had about 20 feet where it was just loose, flopping around. So we got everything, everything down here. I've got my, this is basically just a one inch square tube. I had a bunch, I have a bunch of hooks on here. Some of them broke at some point and I didn't realize it to buy new ones before I took this back on again. Um, so I've got a bunch of zip ties in here. We'll see how that works. Basically just a one inch square tube. I've welded pieces of chain to the top and bottom. And then sort of the same idea, I've got a chain independent to the top and independent to the bottom so that I can pull you know, the top or bottom based on how I uh, a, a dump or curl the bucket uh, control on that tractor. I've got it, uh, I'm sort of at a compound angle because the tractor's sitting this way and it's, you know, so I don't know, we'll see how it goes. Uh, so I'm gonna go through, I gotta cut all these zip ties off or I'm gonna put a little tension on it, cut all these zip ties off and see if we can tension. We got about, probably about five posts. So that should be about a hundred feet. We're gonna try to tension in one shot here. It's been a couple months since I filmed the rest of this video and I'm editing it now and notice I didn't have an ending. So I'm gonna go through and show where we're at now. I've got all the fencing up. I got that end regraded and up the hill and we'll show that in a second and, and planted some plants. And I'm getting ready for the next stage of this, which is the driveway gate. But we'll go ahead and show, uh, just do a quick walkthrough of the progress we've got done so far. So these are the Carolina Jasmine that I had uh, on the other side on the fence I showed in part one. And then these are a flowering vine. I believe I put the name at the end of the first video too. And they're, they're different colors. And I've got them planted down here a few hundred feet. Then we're going to go down to the end and I'll show you, show you that section going up the hill. So I got this hill all regraded. I set a post at the top so I could pull one piece. So there's a seam in the fence there. And it pulls down to the corner here so you're I had to regrade it so you're all on the same angle so you can pull it tight and then I started with another section and went the other way and then you've got a post that's supported on both sides so that you can pull on it and obviously we got the other side of that corner done um, so we're all fenced up through here and down back behind the Leland's so we just need to get that driveway closed off and we'll be ready to go Here's a here's an image of what we're building for the driveway gate. Just an overlay I did in Fusion 360, and then and then this is the steel that I've got, and we'll be putting that in soon. So I'll post that in the next video of this series.